Good morning. Welcome back to my channel. My name's Tess and I make videos about stretching and money as far as I can. And I'm just pottering about in the kitchen. It's in the morning. I've got my pinny on over my pyjamas. And this is the way that I always start my day. <laughs> so I've been washing up. Um, I've put some um, recycling out. And I'm preparing for tea now in the morning. So I've taken some chicken drumsticks out of the freezer. I'll put a clip in here of them because I got some chicken at really reduced prices the other day. So I'll put you a clip here to show you. So, um, one of those packs of chicken thighs, I cooked the night that I picked them up. Um, in, I cooked them in the air fryer and took, for, took two of them and took all the meat off the bone and the kittens had um, fresh chicken for tea. They were very happy. Um, and then the rest were eaten by us last yesterday. Um, and I wouldn't, I don't often give the kittens um, fresh chicken, but at that price I felt, yeah, let's do it, let's look after the pets. <laughs> um, so all the chicken's gone now, but I kept the bones and the skin and all the bits that we didn't want to eat, grisly bits. <laughs> and I've just put those in the instant pot for half an hour with some water, salt and pepper, a bit of garlic, a crushed uh, clove of garlic, a little squirt of ginger, um, two quartered onions, a handful of dried mushrooms and a chopped up carrot. I think that was everything. So I'm just going to cook that to make a broth for tea tonight. Uh, my youngest is really enjoying cooking at the moment so He's going to make um, chicken noodle soup using that broth later, or stock. I never know what to call it, but I'm basically getting all of that lovely chicken flavour out of the bones and the skin and and, the, and getting up additional flavour from the vegetables and what have you that I've put in. Um, bear with me, I need to let a cat into the kitchen. So, you know, I'm making sure that I buy food as cheaply as possible and um, get the absolute most out of it. So the pack of chicken thighs I think was about £1.40 you'll have seen in the clip. It was something in that region and so far we've fed the kittens, we've fed ourselves, all four of us a meal and now we're making stock with the bones which will make us another meal. Um, I could just we could just make the chicken noodle soup just with the stock but I have got some chicken drumsticks out of the freezer to add some meat to it but again there'll be meat left over and for another meal and there'll be skin and bones to make more stock with so I'm really getting the most out of everything um, and I do spend quite a bit of time thinking about the best way to preserve food and to get the most out of it. I'm just going to have a drink of tea. Um, so, um, as you know, I'm, I've recently picked up a, a dehydrator at a car boot sale. I say recently, it was probably like nine months ago or something. <laughs> probably was in the spring maybe eight months ago and really loving dehydrating so I'll just show you some things have been dehydrating so I've got mushrooms in here that we're currently using I love dehydrating mushrooms because sometimes you know you get them really reduced and they're still really in good condition and perfect for dehydrating so in here I've got a whole head of savoy cabbage which I've dehydrated I was thinking about blitzing it into a powder to have a cabbage powder to add to 
soups and all sorts of spaghetti bolognese, whatever. But this would be really good in um, chicken noodle soup, ramen, that kind of thing. Um, so my sons will enjoy that as well. So I've left it just cut up. And then in, um, and that was a cabbage I got free on Olio. Um, and then this is my jar of kale kind of powder. It's a bit like oregano, dried oregano. It's a little bit chunkier than a powder, I would say. But that was four bags of kale <laughs> that I dehydrated. And we had a teaspoon or two to all sorts of things. I put a bit in my bread when I bake my own bread. Um, it doesn't. You know, a teaspoon isn't enough to, even a big heaped teaspoon isn't enough to change the flavour or the colour of anything, but you're getting that additional nutrient profile and it'll keep a long time in this condition. So they're the kinds of things I dehydrate. Um, I'm also interested in vacuum sealing and I've been uh, doing a bit of research into it recently and I'm really pleased to have been sent a um, vacuum sealer by Alacris um, to try out. So I'm going to have a bit of a play with it today, see what it does. If that kind of thing interests you, hang around and have a look with me, see what I get up to with a vacuum sealer. Um, they certainly seem to really, um, really extend the life because they're removing oxygen from the environment around the food. Um, it really just seemed to extend the life of the food, which you know, I, I'm very, I'm all for, you know. Um, and I remember when I was a kid, my mum used to, my dad had an allotment, and my mum used to parboil and freeze bags and bags and bags of the produce that my dad would grow on the allotment. So um, I remember her parboiling carrots, putting them in a plastic bag, and then she'd put a straw, a drinking straw, into the bag, twist the bag around it, suck all the air out through the straw, and then before it had gone back in, she'd tie it with a twisty tie. She would spend hours doing that, and then bung it in the chest freezer under the stairs. Um, and I suppose I'm thinking this is just a more modern way of doing that. <laughs> I've never been very good at getting all the air out of things in that by that method, so... Um, I'm quite excited to try this. I'll give you a look at it. So I've got it all unpacked and this is the vacuum sealer. That's the box it came in. Instructions. Uh, oops, excuse my fingers. There's a seal power lead and this is for uh, vacuum sealing jars which I'll have to work out but I'm not going to do that today. What I want to do is um, vacuum seal some rice just as a tester. I've got a lot of rice and some of it can go into slightly longer term storage if it's vacuum sealed. So that's what I'm going to do next. Um, I've read the instructions um, so, and they're pretty clear I think. I think I've got it square in my head what I need to do so I'm going to give it a go. So they've sent me five bags, so what I'm going to do is really just as a tester because I haven't used a vacuum sealer before, um, I'm going to put some of this already opened rice into the bag. I'm not sure of the best way to do it, I might need a spoon or I might just be able to pour it in. Now, it says you need to leave Oh, there we go, I didn't get it all over <laughs> It says you need to leave a gap, a good gap between the end of the bag between the bit that seals and the product you're um, vacuum sealing so I think that should be plenty and put that in there. This bit here is the bit that gets hot and seals it along there, I think. Close it. 
press dry auto. Hey, it's working! <laughs> right, so all the air's out, now it's sealing. And when that light goes off, it's done. That's what it said in the instructions. So this should be a decent portion for um, for those of us in this family that eat rice. I don't eat it, but there we go. So we are done. Lift it out. Ooh, and there we go. It sealed it. I sound so surprised. Don't I? I know it's a vacuum sealer. That's what it does. But I always expect myself to get something wrong. <laughs> That was really easy though. So, and this is really hard now. There's no movement. The rice isn't moving. There's no air in there. So that should really... I know rice is going to last a long time anyway. <clears throat> the date on this is November 2024. But this now, I'm going to label it, a label, put the date on that I've sealed it. And that should extend its life way beyond that. Probably, from what I'm understanding, it should extend its life probably for a couple of years. So, I mean, this should be good. I know rice lasts a long time anyway, and I wouldn't... That's the best before date, and I wouldn't worry about that myself anyway. I probably think this rice... In this, if, if it wasn't already opened, this rice in this bag would probably be good for way beyond that. But this is going to be good for even further beyond it. So that's great. I really like that. Now you can um, also vacuum seal moist things um, like meats and fish to keep them to make them last longer in your fridge or in your freezer. So. I'm going to do try some doing something moist now um, and see how that goes. So yesterday me and my son took a trip down memory lane. I mean it's not his memory lane, it's my memory lane. And I had something for lunch and a sandwich that I haven't had since I was in my teens and I used to love it. And it's bacon grill. <laughs> It's not the healthiest protein out there in the world, but um, when I was a kid, um, it was one of the things that me and... After my mum passed away, my sister left home. It was just me and my dad living at home. He was elderly and blind. And this was one of our favourite treats. And it was easy for me to cook when I was just like 14 or whatever age I was, you know. Um, so it was just me and my dad between the ages of um, 10 and 16 when he passed away. Um, and But this was one... So during that period of my life, bacon grill was a real pleasure. And um, I saw it in Asda the other week, and because I'm filling up my pantry with um, things that are shelf-stable and I'm trying to focus on proteins... I thought, do you know, I'm going to buy a tin of that and see if I still like it. And then if I do, I'll get some more and bung them in the pantry. And it was brilliant. I really enjoyed it. I had a bacon grill and egg sandwich. And it's just, it's great. I like it. I wouldn't want to eat it too often. It's probably not very good for me. But as an occasional thing, it's great. Anyway, I digress. I didn't obviously use the whole tin, so there's quite a bit left, so I've just sliced it up. Um, and I'm going to vacuum seal it so that it stays fresh in the fridge for longer than it would if I didn't vacuum seal it. So I am tentatively putting that in there, just making sure I'm... Kitten jumping up on the surface because she can smell the bacon grill. <laughs> Yeah, just making sure that I am doing it correctly. So this time I'll do moist auto.
you know, I'm ridiculously excited about this. <laughs> I'm really enjoying it. And it's going to make my food last longer, you know, because we have that thing. Like with this, the chances are this would sit in it. I'd just put it in the fridge in its tin and it would sit there for maybe a week and then we'd suddenly think, oh hang on, is that still good to eat? <laughs> but this way, this is going to last longer in the fridge and I can be sure that it's good to eat. Um, the bags can be reused as well, so when I cut the top off this to use it, let me show you. So when I cut the top off this, um, you can pull them here, they've got little, I don't know if that's going to show, they've got like a little n uh, notch so that you can pull it off there, but I would cut it off there, take the food out, wash it and then reuse it. You know, you can reseal these bags many times um, until they're too small to do it anymore. So there we go, that's going to make the bacon grill last much longer in the fridge. I'm very happy. So this is a new chapter in my food preservation and storage um, adventure. So I'm now able to dehydrate with my five pound car boot dehydrator um, and make vegetable powders and all those kind of things, but make food that isn't shelf stable, shelf stable through with my dehydrator. And now I can extend the life of the foods that I store by vacuum sealing them. And I think, to be honest, I will probably use it more for dried goods, but I can see how useful it would be for freezing. You know, so if you buy a pack of chicken thighs, they're in a big box that takes up a lot of space in the freezer. So I can see how useful it would be. See, I could put this in the freezer now. I don't see if there's any reason I couldn't freeze this bacon grill. But it would take up a lot less space than if I... Like, if I was, fr if I was freezing some chicken thighs, for example, I could vacuum seal them and then freeze them, and it would take up a lot less space than putting the whole plastic tub that they come in into the freezer. So I'm going to carry on trying this out and see what I can do with it. And I'll put a link below to this um, vacuum sealer in case you want to go and just have a look at it, check it out. So, And I'll also put a discount code down below that Alacris have sent me. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you all again really soon. Bye for now.